In today's Blender tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you one of the most overlooked things in Blender that people oftentimes don't use to add extra realism to their renders. Now, here is an example I'll quickly show you. This is a render of the exact same scene, which we'll get to in a little bit, but you can see here, this is just a scene where the focal length is really large and the camera's up close to a chess piece here. But you can notice all the other chess pieces are just as sharp. And this is actually really breaking the realism. Everything being this sharp with a focal length like this, this close in, just doesn't make sense to the brain. However, with a focal length enabled and a focal point, we can see here that this is now sharp, this piece in the middle, and over here, the ones in the background and even some of the ones in the foreground are a little bit blurred. And just this really simple thing that you can enable and use can make a really big difference to the realism of your scene. Now, before I show you how to set this up in Blender, which is really simple, I'll quickly just show you some other examples. You can see here on the side, I have some examples of where the sort of depth of field really adds um, more realism and artistic flair to a render. So here we have this shiny orb and the camera is focusing in close on it. It has a really big focal length. And we have this nice soft focus in the foreground and the background. And the same thing in this one here of a squirrel, which zoomed right in looking at the squirrel. And it has this beautiful sort of soft focus effect here in the foreground and the background. And we kind of see the, the squirrel here. And the same goes for this one here with some moss and some fungus. And you can see over here, a lot of, a lot of these um, photography shots that you get in like forests are really good examples of this. Now here are some areas where we don't observe this as much and that is with large open landscape shots. So here you can see um, the camera is seeing a large landscape and there's not really anything really that close to the camera. Therefore, everything is relatively sharp. You can see here even the background, we're seeing a lot of sharpness and even here in the foreground and even here in the middle, you can see everything is kind of sharp. And the same goes for this shot here because it's a larger shot and the camera isn't really close up as well. Here is another example of a large landscape. You can see everything is really sharp. So um, it's more gonna be in situations where you have a larger focal length and you're up close to an object, kind of really looking at it. So let's jump into Blender and I'll show you how simple it is to get this beautiful depth of field effect in Blender. So what I have here is just a chess set scene from a tutorial I did a few years ago, which you can find on my channel, by the way, if you wanted to make this exact scene. But here I'm just using it to demonstrate. I've got a camera and this camera, if I select it and I go over to my camera settings, you can see it has a large focal length. Now by default, I think Blender is 35 or 55 with the focal length. Um, so with that sort of focal length, you see more of the shot. It's a wider shot. However, we have something like 120, which I've got here. It's really kind of zoomed right up close. And I kind of want to focus on this piece here. So if I were to actually go Z and go rendered, just with the default camera here, you can see this is the issue. Everything is looking really sharp. So a very simple thing to do is with your camera active in your scene, you can simply go to your camera settings of your, of your object data properties and just go down and you'll actually see there is an option called depth of field. Now for me, you can see depth of field appears here because I've already gone ahead and selected an object. But for you, you'll come over here and you'll see it just gives you the option to select an object and your f-stop will probably be a larger value, right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come here to the focus object, the focus on object here, and you can click on the little eyedropper and you can select any object. So I'm gonna click on this piece here, which I wanna focus on. And also, if you wanted to, you could actually just come here and click and search and find whatever object you want. And then once you have an object selected, you can come here to this f-stop. Now the larger this f-stop is, the less you're gonna see this effect, but the smaller this f-stop value is, so if I go 0.1, then all of a sudden this depth of field becomes really apparent. And if I were to actually increase my focal length even more, this would become even more pronounced. However, this sort of way of just selecting an object is a little bit limiting because if I wanted to maybe adjust the focal length slightly where it's focused without moving the object, it becomes a little bit hard. So what you can do is you can simply go shift A, you can go to your empty options and just add in something like a cube. And over here, you can now take this empty and place it wherever you want. And this can be your focal object. 
Now you can see here, I've already added an empty in here. So I'll just delete this. But this empty that I have, I just added it in, placed it where I want the focal point to be. And if you want to be more organized, you can go to your object data properties and just call something like focus. And now what you can do is you can go into your camera view, you can select your camera and in your camera object data properties, you can go over here now to your focus on object and type in the name of that object, which is the focus object. And now if you go Z, you go rendered. Now you have a focal object, which you can easily grab and you can go G. And in this case, I'll go X and I'll move it over to the side. And now you can see the focal point is changing. If I move it even more, you can see this. If I move it over to the side over here, you can see it adjusts where it is. If I go G, Y and move it back, I can now see that the pawn at the back there where I have it is more in focus. If I move it forward, I can see everything goes out of focus. So this now gives me a method of placing my focal object wherever I want it. And then if I look at my camera, I can kind of see that I can add a focus to any object I want. Now this is fantastic for art direction. So if you wanted to put more emphasis on a specific piece or a specific item in a scene or person, this could be really powerful. Like I said, there are limitations. This may not make sense on a larger scale, but something like this, it really works well. So maybe even I want this one here at the back, the queen, I think there, I want the queen in focus. Now I can place it there. And I could even go ahead and animate this guy moving over time to change my focal point. So um, yeah, I really hope you have enjoyed this whole thing and that you're able to use it somehow in your projects. I think this is going to really add realism if you give it a shot. Um, just keep in mind, it does add some more render time to your um, rendering. So if you have an animation, it could easily bump it up an hour or more, but it definitely does add realism and it's definitely worth giving a shot. So I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching and have fun using Blender.